Hello, Substance Moms. I'm Sarah, and I am here with my good friend, Elisha. And I am so excited for her to share a part of her story with you because you guys, she has had such an incredible life change here at Substance, and I can't wait for you to hear about the goodness of God in her life. So, Elisha, thank you for being willing to do this. Yes, anytime. Yeah, this is awesome. So. Let's start off with just the question of, um, you started coming to Substance right around 2019, right? Yes. Right around then. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your life before you started coming here? Um, yeah, so um, before I started coming to Substance, um, I was church hopping with a friend and um, we decided to go to a church nearby and it was the first week and we, um, they had the wrong service listed so we ended up being there at 10 30 and it was actually supposed to start at 10 and they were already mid-service so we google searched 11 a.m church services and the first one that came up that was evangelical type church we were like okay let's go to that one and i actually didn't really want to because i didn't want to go to a church downtown minneapolis just because it's so busy and i'm afraid to get parking tickets and stuff like that <laughs> And so that's real. That's a real my thing. My friends like, oh well, let's just try it. And um, now I've been here since, and I do feel like it's been um, that God really placed me here. Um, wow. And because before that, I was at a point where um, I wasn't liking the way that life was going for me, and um, I just knew that something had to change. And mm -hmm. um, before that, I was you know, really stressed out from being a single mom full-time and working full-time and being a student full-time. Mm -hmm. And then my son's um, medical diagnosis in kindergarten um, really impacted my life because um, I was doing that alone and I was living here alone and I didn't have family support because they were like an hour away. And um, because of his medical diagnosis, he was getting, um, having big um, temper tantrums at school. I constantly got called away from work and there was no one else to go get him. So I always had to leave work, which meant that eventually I was getting fired and I was getting new jobs and getting fired and a new job and getting fired because I had to be there for my son when he needed me. And um, my daughter was also having mental health issues um, because of issues with her dad and um, I just felt really alone in all that and I was trying to juggle all these things and wear all these hats and it was just too much on me and so on the weekends when my son was gone I would um, go out with my friend and we would go bar hopping and at first it was great like it was you know get release the stress go dancing with a friend innocent fun and then it became slowly turned into something different where um, she was chasing men that were really toxic down there, um, downtown, and um, they would end up abusing me because I would stand up for her, and they, um, and so I would leave downtown feeling worse than when I went out, and mm -hmm. so I'm like, what is this doing for me? Like, it's not helping me, it's making things worse, and I felt like I was just kind of spiraling a little bit and mm -hmm. just not yeah. happy with anything that was really happening in my life and I was still single I still didn't have a man and why why I was looking for a man in a bar I don't know like now looking back I'm like why would I do such thing but mm. um, yeah. yeah you had so much going on I mean I just like pointing out some of the things that you're talking about I mean being a single mom alone, I can't imagine all that you are responsible for, mm -hmm. all these things that are happening, plus a child who has a diagnosis and being pulled away and work and all of that, I, I just can't imagine. So um, I just first want to say, like, I just respect you for um, just doing everything that you can to be the best mom that you can be for your kids. And I would just say that to all of you single moms who are watching today, like, just, um, God bless you. Like, I honor you, I respect you for, for doing it all. And I, I just really feel that on my heart to share. And you know, as you're talking about all these things that are stressful in your life and, and looking for love in the wrong places and looking for freedom and, and stress release, all of a sudden, like this is your life, as you said, spiraling, and all of a sudden you find substance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here you go, you come to substance, what happens? 
when you come? Yeah, um, so I actually was looking for a church that would give back to like the community and not just attending on Sunday and then see you next Sunday. Um, and I always really loved culture and I always wanted to travel the world as I loved cultural anthropology when I was in college. Come on. And so I wanted to travel the world and be immersed in culture and learning about other people. I mm -hmm. like people watching. I like watching behaviors and like seeing how people interact with each other. Mm -hmm. And so that was a passion of mine. And so when I, the first time I was at Substance, they were talking about their outreach and how they plant churches all over the place. Um, they were talking about their upcoming mission trip to Monterey, Mexico, and I was just like, this is my place. <laughs> like, I knew right then and there that day that this was my place. And so I came to Northtown because I wanted um, more family vibe, and I wasn't getting that really downtown, and like I said, I didn't want any traffic tickets. So, <laughs> but um, when I came to Northtown, I... Um, that went to the fast track and they said that the quickest way to get involved in community and in um, finding your people here was to join a small group and so singles the single moms group was the one that really stand out to me because I'm a single mom and, and I was struggling with that as something I needed help with and community in with and so I chose that and when I met um, the other moms there including Sarah was part of that group at that time um, they taught me how to pray. Like I didn't know how to openly pray before. It was just reciting prayers that over and over growing up Lutheran. Um, and then slowly I kept asking my kids to come, but I would still show up by myself. Mm -hmm. And then eventually they started coming with me. Um, and I grew so much in my faith. Um, and I started learning Bible verses and really getting to know the Bible and what it says. Um, and I started healing from my past, and then me and my son ended up getting baptized. Woohoo! So, That's so awesome! Yeah. And you did it together? Yep, we, because he has autism, he was a little nervous and scared, and so we actually got into the big tub together, and we did it at the same time because That's he was huge. nervous to do it by himself. So That's huge. Yeah. That's huge, yeah. yeah. And so... Finding like friends and community was like one of the most important things to me. And, um, but it's been a transitional period, but it wasn't easy at all. Um, there was ups and downs and like curves and bends in the road. And, but ultimately I got to here today. And I mean, there's still work to always be done, mm -hmm. but I'm so grateful for all of the transitions that we made so far yeah you know one of the things that I noticed when you first started coming to single moms group was that you really dove in like you didn't just show up but you engaged mm -hmm. and I could tell like you wanted something different you wanted something new you wanted God to move in your life and I loved that about mm -hmm. Elisha because she was hungry for the Lord you know you were hungry you were hungry to learn and and see what God had for your life and when we're hungry and when we seek him we find him mm -hmm. and you found him but you know we still get those temptations sometimes we still have those thoughts that come into our minds where Satan tries to distract us from our faith mm -hmm. maybe you can tell these guys a little bit about like how did you not go back to your old way of life yeah so um it was like sometimes it was a daily struggle of like wanting to call old toxic friends or wanting to like just go out and have fun again but then one thing that helped me was reminding all, reminding myself of all the things I didn't like about that like why why didn't I want to be friends with that person anymore or why didn't I want to go out anymore mm -hmm. and I would just remind myself of that and then I weighed like the pros and cons and I'm like it's not really worth it to do that again mm -hmm. um and then also reaching out to my friends and um my subgroup um, so when we we exchanged numbers and we had like a texting um, forum where we could mm -hmm. talk to each other, a chat room, and so I would reach out and I showed up every single time that we had a meeting, almost every single time. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. maybe one or two I missed, but mm -hmm. um, we were very faithful. <laughs> I will say, and that. that was like my 
I always told Sarah, like, I need to be around my Jesus people because that's keeping me, like, on track. Because mm -hmm. when I was struggling, I was like, okay, let's, let me just get to Tuesday. And then, you know, mm -hmm. um, I can talk about what, maybe what's going on and they'll pray over me and I'll feel better. And then, yeah. you know, it was like almost like just get to the next meeting, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. um, you really saw, I think, the power of community. You know, we talk about that a lot at yeah. church, like the reason why we need community well, you literally experienced that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and so it was. It was difficult letting old, um, toxic friends go, and it would. And whether it's toxic friends or family members, or whatever, but um, sometimes those people are preventing you from reaching your higher place, and sometimes those people don't want you to reach that place because it makes them uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would just say, like, you know, just um, keep on strong, and you can set healthy boundaries no matter who it is, like whether it's a parent or your spouse or siblings or children mm -hmm. even. Um, you can set healthy boundaries and let them know, like, where you stand and that you're confident in what you're doing mm -hmm. and um, creating some space from people um, and also like invest more time in God and reading your Bible and worshiping like worshiping music worship music is like my place like in the car worship music that's mm -hmm. my time with God um, and then um, having community of pe healthy people that are supporting your healthy changes. Um, and then mm -hmm. um, talking to God when you're not sure. You, he's always going to reassure you. And he always, I always ask, like, God, are you there? And then that's how, like, I start a conversation with him. And sometimes he says, yes, I'm here. And then other times he's like, yes, Elisha, I'm always here. And I'm like, <laughs> I think it's a little silly that I keep asking this, but, like, that's how I initiate yeah. And that comforts me knowing that he's there. That's beautiful. With me. That's so. beautiful. Yep. Yeah. You know, there's this scripture from John 5:24 that I just really want to share. And I think it really connects with everything that's happened. You know, there's this from death to life experience that that happened in your life. Your old life, your baptism, your giving your life to the Lord, um, diving into community with the Lord, and this new life in Christ that you have. And it's John 5, 24, and it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. <clears throat> and don't you feel like that really can connect with your life as well? Yes, because that is literally what my journey has been. Yeah. 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 Which is an incredible without judgment. testimony. Amen. That, that's, I feel like that's the yeah. best part of that was like without judgment. Like, yeah. He accepts me exactly how I came mm. to him. Wow, I love that. Yeah. Well, um, I have one more question for you, and okay. it's it's a little bit about your kids because you you said your kids are starting to come to church, and I mean they're now a part of it, obviously. Mm -hmm. How has your relationship with your kids and your parenting changed since you've started like just being a part of the Substance Family? Yeah, it's changed so much. Um, my daughter had a lot of, like I said before, she had a mental health issues um, from when her dad like took off with her in Wisconsin. We had to get the police involved. When I got her back, she hated me. He had fed her so many lies. Mm -hmm. um, and our relationship was broken. Like she didn't trust me. Um, she didn't even want me as her mom anymore like it was bad mm -hmm. and so she was like um cutting and she one time took a handful of pills mm -hmm. she running away from home and this was all between the ages of 11 and 12. this is not oh, like man. a teenager this is a preteen doing this wow. and so um since joining substance she hasn't had any self-inflicting behaviors of harming herself praise god and she yeah she wow. and she got involved in kids club or the youth group yep. and she had mentors there and friends there yeah. and um she the first service that she actually came to it was like god was working with that because we showed up and the service was on how to be a better son or daughter <laughs> and then on the verse side how to be a better mother parent and she literally kept looking at me. She's like, you planned this. You planned this. 
she goes, he's talking to me. She plan- You planned this. I'm like, no, I didn't. This is the Lord. He did this. Like, that's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love that. And um, yeah. so now, like, um, we have um, grown so close that now she even tells people that I'm her best friend. She oh. tells, like, church mentors that have come to me and said that, you know, your daughter just speaks so highly of you. And it has been just a transformative. Um, and yeah, yeah, she even tells her friends, like, my mom's my best friend. <laughs> Come <laughs> like, on. And she's 14 now. And yeah. so it's been amazing. Um, it's huge. And then my son, who has high functioning autism, um, he would run out of kids club every single week when we first started. And we even were, we even had some issues where I was like, I don't even know if he can go anymore. Like if I, if he's going to keep running out, I don't know if it's even safe to be there. Now he runs two kids club mm-hmm. and he can't wait. Um, he came here with me today and he was like all excited. And then there's no kids here, but like, <laughs> and, but he loves coming here. And he always asked me, mom, when are we going to go to church again? Because he can't wait to be here and, and with this community. Mm-hmm. And um, I also started, um, he has so much anxiety. So I started praying with him at night, hoping that that would like help him. And the first night I ever did that, he got, he just completely relaxed because he was just so tense. Like, I can't go to sleep. And he's like balled up with all this anger and like anxiety and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And we prayed together. And he like just relaxed and he went to sleep peacefully and it was the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And so now like at night he'll ask if we could read the Action Bible together and we'll pray. We pray over not only him and like his worries or what he needs forgiveness for, but also who he wants to pray over because he's always anxious about his family like and Mm -hmm. what's going to happen to them. Um, And it has been amazing. I just feel like God is doing generational work in your family. I mean, he did such a miracle in your life, and you are already seeing the miracles he's doing in your kids' life. And that is the beauty of the Lord. That is God's goodness. So So thank you so much for sharing your testimony. I hope that you guys have been blessed by this. I have. I'm so encouraged. And um, thank you so much for all that you do for our church community now, because I know that you're pouring in as a leader within Substance Moms now too, for single moms. So thank you so much. God bless you guys and have a great day.